Greetings friends and enemies, it's Rin and welcome to the Art Struggle channel. So I was recently cleaning up my room and I happened to find these. These are how to draw books that I was using to learn art when I was in primary and middle school. So today you are gonna watch me retro the step-by-step -step examples in my style, while I will make a quick review of them. And you can count how many times I said different and book. <laughs> Also, disclaimer, uh, I have only seen those books in Polish, so any awkward wording that I might make fun of or some missing content that I'll say I would like to see in those books might be either the original or the translation fault, and I don't know that. So starting with uh, this thing... Je dessine des mangas that I don't know how to name, because I don't know French at all, which is the original language of that book, and I couldn't find an English title for it. I found different books by this author in English, but not this one. And it's by uh, this person. Thierry Baudenon. And I will be drawing a hurrying student. So this book, well, it didn't make a very good impression on me. You can see it's very thin, so there's not much content in it. The vast majority of the book is just step-by-step -step examples of characters, and although you can learn something from that, you would really benefit more from learning why you should start drawing the head from a circle instead of just being told to do that. Basically, I think even in its very small portion of theory and explanation, the book is still focus more on showing you examples and not showing why you should draw it that way or how to construct your own characters. The text also sound like the author doesn't really know what they are talking about. I laughed hard after reading the part that I would roughly translate to boys this age develop confidence, girls develop curves. <laughs> Like, how are those things related? How should I differentiate boys and girls with that description? How do I draw confidence? Are girls never confident? <laughs> I am also very confused because the book sounds like it wants you to use the knowledge from it to draw a whole comic, but then only teaches you how to draw characters, which is... Uh, I really feel like a false advertisement. <laughs> Although I, I might be a bit overdramatic in that topic because I've seen one too many books and course advertising itself as a drawing course or manga course, but then only teaching you how to draw characters and characters are not the only thing you can draw. In fact, a lot of young artists forget about that and later struggle to keep their backgrounds, animals and objects to their character standards, because they spend the first five years practicing only characters. Trust me, I am speaking from experience. <laughs> So overall, I will rate this 2 out of 10. It's very limited and you won't learn much, but if you're just looking for some fun characters ideas, then, then I guess it's fine. <laughs> As for the drawing part, you can see that she's not really in a hurry, simply because that post didn't give me a I'm in a hurry vibes, more like I'm so excited with the first cherry flowers that I saw walking to school. And the uh, expression, well, those dead eyes staring deep into my soul with this glued on triangle smile didn't really tell me anything, so I went with the excitement idea. The next book is The Complete Guide to Draw Manga for Beginners Up. Everything You Need to Know by Sonia Leon in Boy It Is Complete. And I will be drawing She the Fox Spirit, created by Chie Kutsueda. I was very positively surprised by this one. I didn't remember it being this detailed. Especially after the first book, I was pleasantly surprised with how this one is good at explaining why you should draw something. It shows you the 3D rotation of the head, it explains how to build hairstyles and show you different styles, and talks in depth about anatomy me and how the fabric follows the shapes of your characters. But what's important is that it doesn't stop at characters. It shows you how to draw backgrounds, animals, weapons, and explains color theory and different types of perspective, and shows you how to draw characters interacting. It's talking about different materials and different techniques, so you'll find here a lot of tips whether you work with pens, pencils, watercolors, screen tones, markers, or digitally in any style. 
to this style. Even the step-by-step -step characters uh, library is there to show you how various artists' drawing process can look in many different ways. And the tiny sketches? <laughs> It talks about various software to make your art and to make it look better and about sites you can publish and promote your comic. It also explains how paneling, lettering and speech bubbles affect the reading experience and even go as far as explaining how printing works, which was a real delightness for me because you might not know that, but I'm a huge polygraphy nerd. It's so complex, I sometimes forget it's just about manga and not just drawing in general. You can easily learn a lot of stuff about drawing in any style from that book. So as the title says, the book is pretty complex, but unfortunately, even though it still contains more content than I could ever expect from just one book, there is still some content missing. Some probably due to its age, like in the discussion of computer fonts versus handwriting, I didn't find anything about making a font from your own handwriting, which is actually the best option in my opinion, because it blends well with your art and it's easy to use you don't have to write it by hand every time, just once. But I guess that wasn't as accessible at the time. But the one thing that I felt was really missing was composition. The book talks about composition of panels on the page, but composition of individual illustrations is equally important because it also affects the reading experience and it can also build a proper mood. I feel like the book could also give us more explanation on how to draw more ethnic facial features on characters. The small hair example is pretty much all I was able to find, and I see that lack of tutorials on various ethnic features is a major factor that discourages young artists to draw diverse characters. Because we don't want to make them look stereotypical or just not ethnic enough. I know I used to think that, and I still sometimes do. So in summary, the complete guide to draw manga is a great how to draw. Although it's missing a few topics, I still didn't expect it to be half this complex. It also talks about different ways you can stylize your art while showing you the realistic inspirations, which I think is extremely rare and extremely helpful. I feel like most courses and tutorials uh, only show you how to draw in their style, while this book is a powerful tool to make a style of your own. And for that, I am rating this a 9.5 out of 10 because of the missing compositions. I can still learn a lot from this book today, and I will. And for the drawing part, the characters in this book are really complex, so this art took me, I think, the longest. Although that might be also a fault of me deciding to draw the kimono pattern by hand. Next up is Humongous Book of Cartooning by Christopher Hart, and I will be drawing with Watch Ago, I guess? Boy, this book made me angry. So I'd like to say that although I had this book in my childhood, I didn't really use it that much. I was more interested in manga art, and I only got into cartoons very recently, so I just want you to keep that in mind. But some skills in art are universal, and also I can still tell a lot about how much I could learn from it. So I had high expectation because the book looks decent, except for the fact that it's glued and it's falling apart because of that. Although the book talks not only about characters, but also about backgrounds, animals, it explains perspective pretty well, but the lack of color theory and lack of any color in general. That's a weird choice for a cartoon book. The complete guide to manga had a color theory section, even though manga comics are primarily black and white. And how often do you see black and white cartoon art? Like, yeah, it happens sometimes, but I feel like the majority 
majority of cartoon art relies heavily on colors. So that's a real shame the book doesn't say a word about coloring. I also felt like it's missing some basic shape language that is actually a good thing to talk about while drawing anything, but especially in the topic of cartoon style. My god, cartoons are so shape based. <laughs> Although I can get half of the point for touching a bit of composition topic while talking about backgrounds, but it didn't really explain anything, so only half. I also unfortunately diagnosed this book with teaching me how to read through the characters and assets instead of building my own style. It fails to explain why I should draw this way, like the part when drawing a not so smart character you should always draw them with a thick neck. First of all, that depends. <laughs> don't say always. And second, okay, why? Because if I don't know why, then how can I modify it for my style? How can I choose when I don't want to do it? And how can I potentially use it for, I don't know, comedy? Also, it's always good to not only show how to stylize different parts of your drawing, but how they are looking in real life. So we can see which parts of them was exaggerated and maybe do it a bit differently and build your own style. The overall feeling I got from this book is the same feeling as when you ask your older sibling to help you with maths and they just read the assignment out loud and tell you the answer and get irritated that you didn't learn anything from them just doing that. Like, yeah, I know the answer and I had the question, but how did I get here? How can I do it myself? Well, teaching is a skill too. Also, the book is being a bit sexist and as much as I understand that it's old and that was more socially acceptable and very much in the way people looked at women in cartoons back then, actually it's still, which is sad, but it doesn't change the fact that it felt icky reading about the way this book talks about drawing female characters. Like, the fact that there's a lot of male characters with various personalities and characteristics like heroic and genuine, evil, lazy and smart and serious, while all the female characters are described as feminine, cute, attractive, fashionable or seductive. And then only non-look-based uh, descriptor I could find was Stupid. And that part about how teenage girls are usually attractive. FBI, open up! Again, I think it's a good time to remind you that I had only seen Polish editions, so that might be the translator fault to some degree. So in the end, I was torn between 6 out of 10 because it touched a few topics, not only characters, and 1 out of 10 because it taught me absolutely nothing about drawing characters other than copying artist drawing. So I eventually set on 4 out of 10. And for the art piece, I use more cartoonish style than for the first two. And because, as I said before, there are no colors, I had to make them up myself. But points for having a background though. Last book that we are gonna talk about today is Drawing Animals Made Amazingly Easy by also Christopher Hart. And I will be drawing this cute giraffe. So I have to say I was expecting something equally bad as the cartoon book, but fortunately I was pleasantly surprised. This book makes a good job showing different animals from various angles and in different poses, but I am a picky customer, so I found a few littles that I didn't like. For example, the author from the start says that they wanted the skeletons to be simplified, and I'm not a fan of that. Especially that the animals lack skulls and in a lot of places rib cages that I think are very important to see their shapes and placement. I've only seen the muscles being discussed in case of horse's neck, which I think is also not very good. Not that they showed it for horse neck, but rather that they didn't show it anywhere else. Because if we're talking about animals moving, well, the muscles are kinda involved. For example, if the book showed you how horse's muscles don't usually reach to the end of its legs, only the tendons, you would know to draw them very thin and resembling more of a bone shape, as well as how this affects the way horses move their legs. 
the comparison of human anatomy and dog's anatomy was actually a very good idea and I liked it. But calling it an animal drawing book is maybe not incorrect. But I would really like to also learn how to draw different types of animals than just mammals, literally two birds and one... Merz, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Kangaroo! <laughs> Show me how to draw a snake or a shark because anatomy of those animals is wildly different and I have no idea how to draw them by just reading this book. My final rate is solid 7 out of 10. It's a good book if you feel like it's gonna be something for you, but it was Definitely not for me, because although I learned how to draw a giraffe, which I couldn't do earlier, I think I could do it better myself if I just google the anatomy and try to draw from references and maybe watch some videos with giraffes running around. Animal study is always a good practice, so you just have to decide if you want to do it yourself or use this book. And the last thing I wanted to mention is not a book, but rather a series of articles. I'm talking about the Kia Art Room by Vanitachi. I'm not gonna go into depth since I only have a couple of them, and also most of you don't even have access to use it because it's only in Polish. But I wanted to honor it as it was a big part of my experience as a beginner artist. For those of you who don't know, Kia is a Polish magazine about anime and manga. In most part, it's hosting reviews, but they also write some articles about Japanese culture and language and some art stuff. And I was spending all of my allowance on them in middle school. It's text heavy and it doesn't have many drawing in it, but that's actually a good thing, because the author could talk a lot about the theoretical part of art. They also were talking about not only drawing, but also writing part of making manga comics. And I think that was very important because it taught me to think more about what I'm drawing and why am I drawing this a certain way and how plot and character design intersects and are equally important. So that's a 7 out of 10 from me, but obviously I only read a couple of these articles. <laughs> so to summarize this video, I highly recommend you to buy a complete guide to manga. It's a great book. Just make sure to look up something about compositions and how to draw characters of different ethnicities. And then you also might buy drawing animals if you think that it will be fitting for your learning style. And don't buy the other two, because it's just a waste of money. In, in my opinion. Well, that's also a good time to say that it's all my opinion and someone else who is more advanced in drawing and teaching or have different learning preferences might have a different one. I think it's the best to not rely on just one book or just one artist because every artist's experience is unique and we all have different answers to the same questions. So buy some more book or watch some YouTube tutorials if you don't want to spend money and you can even watch some speed drawings or live streams because there's also a lot you can learn from just observing the creative process. And go try drawing study from real life and photography. If you are interested, I am also giving some private art lessons. More information are right now on the screen and also in the description. And don't forget to have fun drawing. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you liked it, if you like, and see you in the next one. Bye!